right, here we go. It's October 27th, back from the public land challenge. Feels good to get out from behind the computer and, and get back out in the field. So in the first couple weeks there, I had a few good encounters with younger bucks, but nothing I wanted to shoot. Uh, I did shoot a doe on October 12th, had a good hunt that evening. And then for the next couple weeks, I've been busy editing. So getting back to it here, actually had hunted yesterday when it had snowed, caught a glimpse of a shooter buck and then had a couple other does close by. But the good thing is Jake shot a great buck yesterday, really cool deer with deep forks. So that's got us fired up. And actually just this weather in general here, this last week of October has been cool. It's gonna stay cool all the way into November. And this pre-rut time frame is probably my favorite part of the season. The bucks are laying down a ton of sign right now. They're super aggressive. They're responsive to calling and to decoying. And that's actually one of my top goals for the season is to shoot a buck over a decoy. Cause that's something I used to do a lot of growing up in Nebraska. In fact, going back to my first year of bow hunting, and this was before we had a commercially made decoy, I had uh, made a cardboard cutout of the silhouette of a deer. And the very first time I ever used it, my dad and I were hunting together on public land and actually a decoy two bucks across the field and my dad shot one of them as it was coming into this cardboard cutout that I made. So that was one of my favorite hunts ever. From that point on, I've always loved using decoys. Decided to upgrade a little bit, bought a carry light decoy and uh, used, been using that same decoy for probably 20 years now. Shot a lot of bucks over it, had a lot of great hunts with it. So hopefully I get another one to come into it tonight. Uh, going back to a spot that I had hunted uh, back in early October, had a good encounter with a younger buck. And it's a big open lake bottom with a lot of really good bedding cover around there and have a lot of visibility to where if a buck comes out anywhere within a few hundred yards, be able to at least see him, call to him, and hopefully pull him into the decoy. So that's the plan and that's my goal, to shoot a buck over this old decoy. So we're calling an audible. The first spot that we went to this morning is it's grown up really thick compared to last year. It was just short brome grass last year. Now it's grown up into really tall, you know, native grass, Indian grass, stuff like that. Great habitat, but uh, not ideal for what we were wanting to do this morning. So we drove about 20 minutes, came to a different spot. It's right at legal shooting time right now. We're gonna jet back in here about 500 yards. We're gonna be up on top of a ridge or some really thick draws that fall off, really good bedding cover around there. Just gonna set up the decoy, do some calling, and uh, try to pull something up out of those draws. There's a bunch of cedar trees that we can get tucked up in. Let's go get Plan them. B. Another fresh grape right here. Looking good. Another scrape. The rubs are super fresh. Shavings are top of the grass and on top of leaves. That one up there is still really green. set up here. We just popped out of the corner of the timber. There was a bunch of fresh rubs and scrapes on the way in. Got this long open ridge here. That's why I wanted to come back in here. It's got great visibility from 200 yards in that direction. Another 100 to 150 back in this direction. We're kind of set up in this corner here. There's these thick nasty draws on this side of the ridge, thick cedar bedding on that side of the ridge. So hopefully we'll catch a buck, you know, 
working across one of these ridges, have him see the decoy or call to him and get his attention. Also, we'll do a couple calling sequences throughout the morning. I've got the antlers in the grunt tube and call down into a bunch of this country and hopefully pull a buck up out, bring him into the decoy. So, yeah, I like it. to start light, grunt and snort wheeze. We'll give it a couple minutes and if nothing shows up, then we'll rattle. a hedge apple falling to the ground. I guess if it blows or takes off, we'll know it was a deer, but that's exactly what those hedge apples sound like when they hit the ground. <laughs> yep, hedge apple. It's about nine o'clock right now. Been pretty uneventful morning so far, other than about an hour ago. We had a two-year-old buck come in about 20 yards away, kind of caught us off guard. Crested the top of the ridge here and saw, I think he just saw me turn my head and then he bounded off, unfortunately. It's been calm all morning, but the day winds are starting to pick up here a little bit. Did a calling sequence earlier, nothing came of it, but we're gonna do another one here in a couple minutes. Start out with a grunt call and then uh, give it a couple minutes, make sure there's nothing real close by, and then we'll hit the antlers, call farther down into this thick bedding. All right, ready to make some noise. So I got a little bit better visual. Right here, right here, big buck right here, Ethan.
Got him. Hey, just listen. I look up and I see this white rack coming right up out of his, coming up out of that draw. He was working to the left. I didn't know what exactly he was going to do. He was kind of in this thick stuff. I'm staying down low trying to stay hidden. I thought maybe he was going to swing left. And then finally he broke and yeah. came through and came on the back side of the decoy. It gave about, you a perfect About shot. 25 yards. I love using the decoy. I mean, without it, you call a buck up here like that, and what's he gonna do? You know, he's just gonna look. I mean, we moved no, around a lot. I shouldn't have moved as much as I did, but. I mean, it looked good. I thought it was just behind the shoulder and good. about halfway up. It sounded, sounded solid. Perfect, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks good. Yeah, it looks good. That's great. Especially front and back. Perfect. That was insane. I'm you got sure. you got to see the decoy in action. All right, it's 9:45, and about. 20, 25 minutes since the shot. We've just been calming down a little bit. Ethan's Lake has finally settled down. It's a real thing. Yeah, it's a real thing. It's, a, it's funny to see it in person. Yeah. Is it always your left leg? I don't know. It's <laughs> pretty wobbly. So we're going to step out there and see if we can find any blood. Right there. right there. He's right there. He's right there. Didn't go anywhere. No. Didn't go anywhere. Good job. Yes. Man. Awesome. Ethan. Didn't we did it. Decoy and rattling. I know, that's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he did not go anywhere. No. Decoy is right there. Yeah, I mean, 35 yards, 30, man. 35 yards. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at that. Oh, beautiful 10 pointer. He got shavings all in his bases. There's so many rubs in there. there. Is, yeah, this, rub, or this, this ridge is just torched with fresh rubs. I mean, just a perfect, perfect decoy hunt. Beautiful late October morning. Honestly, I don't know how it gets better, Gooch. We both said that on the way out, we were like, this is just feels like a perfect morning. It's cold. You can smell them. Yeah, he smells smell like Smell those tarsos. Oh, yeah. it smells like the rut. Gotta love that. And that is, that's exit right there. And there's entry right in the V. In the v. Right. Edge of the shoulder blade is right there. I mean, just right in the pocket. Yeah. And I took a while while I was aiming, making sure I got the pin where I wanted it tight to that V because he was just ever so slightly quartering too. Mm -hmm. Man, that's awesome. I mean, I just, I, I love hunting over decoys. All right, while well, we're waiting for Jake and Mindy, figured I'd take a minute here to talk about exactly how we position the decoy relative to our setup because we get a lot of questions about that, people wondering what direction to face it. So I'll just go through my thought process for when I was setting the decoy up. Our setup is behind that cedar tree right there. And basically I, I selected this part of this ridge because it's right in the corner here to where we have visibility back in this direction and visibility in, the, in that direction. So basically maximizing you know, how much area this decoy can be seen. So a lot of times shooting lanes and, you know, vegetation will dictate where you, where exactly you need to put the decoy. But in this situation, it's all pretty open right here. So I've positioned the decoy basically facing back towards or kind of quartering back towards our position with the thought if a buck pops out from, I guess my right, our left in the setup, 
hopefully he's going to come to the head of the decoy, walk in front, and that would give us an easy, like 12 to 15 yard broadside shot as he comes around to confront the head of the decoy. Same thing if a buck was coming from the left, that he would come down this ridge, come to the head of the decoy to confront it, and again, giving us a, you know, an easy broadside shot as he comes to the head of the decoy. But the way I ended up working out this morning is I called that buck up out of that draw, and he basically was coming in, facing towards us, saw the decoy, started to work left, thought maybe he was gonna go behind all this thick stuff and I wasn't gonna get an opportunity. But instead, he peeled back to the right, and then came in and basically got right next to the decoy. And, you know, I, of course, had a shot, so I wasn't gonna wait around to see what was gonna happen, but that's the power of the decoy. That's why I love using them, especially in conjunction with calling, because we pulled that buck out of there, up out of that draw, saw him at 40, 45 yards, and with no decoy here, you know, what are you gonna do? He's gonna pop up here, see that there's, see that there's nothing here, and possibly get nervous and leave, or just lose interest and leave. Now maybe, maybe because we were calling from some thick cover, he would have come up farther to investigate, but he would have been looking in our direction the whole time. Instead, with the decoy, we've got the focal point to take his attention off of us, and we certainly needed that because we kind of got caught off guard and we were shuffling around as he was, you know, moving left, moving right, trying to get in position. Ethan was trying to get in position to film over the top of me, so there was a lot of movement going on, and the decoy took his attention away from us, which was huge. That's, that's why we got the shot. Shot a lot of bucks over this old guy. He's got knocked over a few times, had to screw the antlers back on, Got the ears, we screwed the ears on as well, but got them facing backwards instead of forwards. Because in forwards, it kind of looks like an alert position. Got them facing backwards, so it looks like an aggressive posture. Not sure if it makes a difference or not, but makes sense to me. I can't believe how light these are. You gonna run those? I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me see them, I haven't even picked them up yet. You know, I did one of those things where you, you kind of think you know what the weight's going to be, right? And so you, you go to pick them up, and I about smacked my hand on the top of it. That's a sales pitch there, Mindy. Yep, there you go. Tag that in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. So that's it, huh? Oh, man. <laughs> I said I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Rattle them in. I'm not, no, no doubt about it. Straight gave, rattle them in. He gave you a run for your money. It's hard to see who's digging those together. He got his feet in the ground <laughs> like that. Get into it. Like, this might work. <laughs> they told us at the archer shop the other day that guy down there he said they're, they're coming, coming to the horns. They're coming, they're they're coming to the horns. <laughs> Let's Are you get finally him. ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Man, people think Here. women take a long time. You're a little cranky. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> hey, that was mine. Uh, <laughs> you're not you when you're hungry. <laughs> Is that what's the plan here? What? Give me a couple pumps. Mine aren't okay. I'm ripping that Snickers. <laughs> 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 for a sign that we might have a good morning. <laughs> Bro broken in half tree. Up. Still green. Bleeding, yeah. I think is what Dan called him. This was a spot. Oh. Just tucked right in. Tucked right in. The 360 camera was like right back here. Uh -huh. It was I had that rolling the whole time, so we'll we'll know how long it took. It probably wasn't very long. Where's he at? Down the ridge. <laughs> 30 not, yards not that far. Way. <laughs> Greg, when you see him run away in the footage, like, I'm not kidding you, he had to die within two, like, two bounds of the... He's just out of sight Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's like... <clears throat> Jeez, he yeah, really got... All that junk news. Yeah, yeah, he'll do. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful, but... Yeah, he's just perfectly symmetrical. He is, yeah. Yeah, there'd be almost no deductions if yeah. the guy was into that. Yeah. <laughs> the guy was. <laughs> the nice thing about the top of this ridge, though, too, is like there's not a lot of tree stand opportunities. So you guys being on the ground, is you're probably in an area that, I mean, I can't see a tree that would be real ideal to set up in within sight of us. That cedar tree had been cut out years ago, whether it was a turkey hunter or somebody gun hunting, I don't know. Yeah. But it just didn't seem like anybody had been in here recently. 
And with all those fresh rubs, you know, he knew yeah. there were still bucks actively in here. So That's why it's nice to know, have a bunch of areas in mind. It's like having a plan B and C and D is... I mean, get, and given the conditions, somewhere you can access easy and then take advantage of the still conditions and, you know, have that call and carry a long ways. Yeah. And like I said, the first sequence we did, nothing came of it. Yeah. But the second one, I think it was about an hour later, it was about nine o'clock, the winds had started to pick up. It just felt like... It seems like that's when you'll get like a little flurry of activity though, is like around nine o'clock when the wind does start to pick up and whatnot. I don't know if they're bedding down at first light and then... Like as the conditions change, they get up to move around and shift right. where they're going to be throughout the day or what. But yeah. definitely seems like around nine o'clock they always get up again. What I did like though that uh, that grunt call, mm -hmm. that new grunt call, like I'd, I'd hit that, and that you could hear that carry down yeah. into the bottom as well. It goes a long way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was it was impressive. That's what I said too about, about that one I just shot. Is like it needed to be loud because that buck I we grunted in was running like. For yeah. him to hear that, like it had to be loud, and like he stopped the first time I ripped it, and then I did it again so he could pinpoint, and he just came running. Get yourself a haven, dude. Yeah, <laughs> we're ninja. just we're just gonna yeah. name drop every sponsor in this video. <laughs> it's like literally the easiest thing ever. <sighs> to if check them in. Yeah, if you have service. You shot something, didn't you? <laughs> On the ground with the decoy, rattled him in. Yeah, it was yeah, it was a lot of fun. Well, I really a lot of fun. Yeah, how far was he? Oh, 23, 24, something like that. Good, were you there? Oh yeah. <laughs> who else would be? Here? Ask another stupid question. Come on. That's yeah, that's how many how, we how many bucks has it been that you filmed this year? In mine. Seven. And Jake. Eight. Seven. <laughs> and a doe. And a doe. Nine. He's filmed nine <laughs> kills. And shot a doe. When I was an intern, I had like four, five, or maybe six total. I can't remember. But, I mean, you win, so great job. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I'm just getting extremely lucky. All right. We'll let you go. All right. See Bye, you guys. Zach. Good job. See ya. Well, that's that. It's all over. Good thing is Doug Fernbaugh, Zach's dad, yep. and Ben have Best Iowa friend. tags. Yep. So. And Jake, you've got several buddies that are going to come down. For gun season. Gun yep. season, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it's been a great year on the, the public land here, and I mean, we're really fortunate to have, and in a lot of parts of the states, have a lot of quality public land. Yeah. I mean, we've always talked about in the past, like how we wish we could tag out so we could go pheasant hunting, go duck hunting, Small and experience all hunting. the other yeah. opportunities that there are around here. I think it's also going to be fun just to have other people that haven't hunted here a whole lot, yeah. and you know, be able to you know kind of show them the ropes, that's a heck of an opportunity for those guys like they're gonna for, coming from where they're coming from it's gonna blow their mind all right just got them field dressed and look to see what the arrow passed through went through the top part of the right lung which would have been entry side through the center of the left lung on exit and also it looked like it clipped a major vessel right here yep there's a broadhead hole right through that and he was down you know literally in seconds he bounded just out of sight and and fell within 30 35 yards something like that so those major perfect. vessels like seems like it put it they put them down real quick like yeah that. yeah for short, sure short distance yep and that's that's the advantage of aiming in the v tighter mm -hmm. to the shoulder couldn't ask for anything more quick humane kill gooch is down too <laughs> yeah you didn't have uh enough patience like ted miller did but yeah <laughs> i didn't i didn't milk the footage i didn't let him <laughs> knock the decoy over and then shoot him only Ted has that, that kind of patience. <laughs> <laughs> he outcut it with me for two weeks. He's got to have a lot of patience. That's a good hunt right there. Ooh. Use some of that water though. <laughs> Wrap it up. Come on. Isn't Greg wrapping it up? He's back there. Go ahead, Gooch. What am I gonna say? I say, well, these guys couldn't have done it without me. Um. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel to be the most prolific cameraman in THP history? It doesn't. Maybe it's in history ever. Like, it's just like uh, extreme luck. I think, honestly, it's just like you guys know what you're doing. So as long as I don't get in the way of that, you guys are usually going to get it done. So. I will say there was one moment when Gooch was moving behind yeah. me to get in position to film over my shoulder that the thought buck it was, was over. I thought he was locked onto us. <laughs> Got a little bit nervous there. But safe to say I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Absolutely not. <laughs> I was really scared that I blew it. But. All right. That's it for Iowa for now. 
Yeah, so we're going to get something to eat, then we're going to Tennessee, hopefully South Dakota, or somewhere out west. Thank you all.